Hello Williams class, here is chapter 11 of Wolf Brother by Michelle Pavin. How much do you know, said Finn Kedin. Nothing, said Torak, eyeing the jagged bone knife at the raven leader's belt. Are you going to sacrifice me? Finn Kedin did not reply. He and Soyun crouched at either side of the doorway watching him. He felt like prey. Behind his back he scrabbled around for something, anything that he could use to cut the rawhide. His fingers found only a willow branch mat, smooth and useless. How much do you know? said Finn Kedin again. Torak took a deep breath. I'm not your listener, he said as steadily as he could. I can't be. I've never even heard of the prophecy. And yet, he wondered. Why was Wren so certain? What does speaking wolf talk have to do with it? Finn Kedin turned away. His face was as unreadable as ever, but Torak saw his hand tighten on his knife. Sayun leaned forward and peered into Torak's eyes in the firelight. He saw her closely. He'd never encountered anyone so old. Through her scant white hair, her scalp gleamed like polished bone. Her face was as sharp as a bird's. Age had scorched away all kindly feelings to leave only the fierce raven essence. According to Wren, she said harshly, you can talk to the wolf. That's part of the prophecy, the part we didn't tell you. Torak stared at her. Wren's wrong, he said. I can't... Don't lie to us, said Finn Kedin without turning his head. Torak swallowed. Again he groped behind him. This time, yes, a tiny piece of flake, a tiny flake of flint, no bigger than his thumbnail, probably dropped by someone sharpening a knife. His fingers closed over it. If only Finn Kedin and Sayun would return to the clan meet, he might be able to cut himself free. Then he could find wherever Wren had taken Wolf and dodge between the guards, and his spirit sank. He'd need a lot of luck to manage all that. Shall I tell you, said Sayun, why you can talk to the wolf? Sayun, what's the use, said Finn Kedin. We're wasting time. He must be told, said the old woman. She fell silent. Then with one yellow claw-like finger, she touched the amulet at her breast and began tracing the spiral. Torak watched her talon going round and round. He started to feel dizzy. Many summers ago, said the raven Magay, your father and mother left their clan. They went to hide from their enemies far, far away in the deep forest among the green souls of the talking trees. Still, her talon traced the spiral, drawing Torak down into the past. Three moons after you were born, Sayun went on, your mother died. Finn Kedin got up, crossed his arms over his chest and stood staring out into the darkness. Torak blinked as if waking from a dream. Sayun didn't even glance at Finn Kedin. Her attention was fixed on Torak. You were only an infant, she said. Your father couldn't feed you. Usually when that happens, the father smothers his child to spare it a slow death from starvation. But your father found another way, a she-wolf with a litter. He put you in her den. Torak struggled to take it in. Three moons you were with her in the den. Three moons to learn the wolf talk. Torak gripped the, flake, the flint flake so hard that it dug into his palm. He could feel that Sayun was telling the truth. This was why he could talk to Wolf. This was why he had that vision when he found the den, the squirming cubs, the rich, fatty milk. How could Sayun possibly know? No, he said, this is a trap. You couldn't know this. You weren't there. Your father told me, said Sayun. He can't have done. We never went near people. Oh, but you did once, five summers ago. Don't you remember the clan met by the sea? Torak's pulse began to race. Your father went there to find me, to tell me about you. Her talon came to rest at the heart of the spiral. You are not like others, she said in her raven's croak. You are the listener. Again, Torak's grip on the flint tightened. I, I can't be. I don't understand. Of course he doesn't, said Finkedin over his shoulder. He turned to Torak. Your father told you nothing about who you are. That's right, isn't it? Torak nodded. The raven leader was silent for a moment. His face was still, but Torak sensed a battle raging beneath his mask-like features. There's only one thing you need to know, said Finn Kedin. It's this. It is not by chance that the bear attacked your father. It's because of him that it came into being. Torak's heart missed a beat. Because of my father, Finn Kedin warned Sayun. The raven leader shot her a sharp glance. You said he should know. Now I'm telling him. But, said Torak, it was the crippled wanderer who... The crippled wanderer, cut in Finn Kedin, was your father's sworn enemy. Torak shrank behind, back against the roof post. My father didn't have enemies. 
the raven leader's eyes glinted dangerously. Your father wasn't just some hunter from the wolf clan. He was the wolf clan Mage. Polak forgot to breathe. He didn't tell you that either, did he? said Finkeddin. Oh yes, he was the wolf Mage. And it's because of him that this creature is rampaging through the forest. Oh, whispered Torak. That isn't true. He kept you ignorant of everything, didn't he? Finkeddin, said Sayun. He was trying to protect, yes. And look at the result, Finkeddin rounded on her. A half-grown boy who knows nothing. Yet you ask me to believe that he is the only one who can... He stopped short, shaking his head. There was a taut silence. Finkeddin took a deep breath. The man who created the bear, he told Torak quietly, did it for a single purpose. He created the bear to kill your father. The sky was lightning in the east when Torak finally cut the rope around his wrist with the flake of flint. There was no time to lose. Finkeddin had just gone back to the clan meet with Sayun, where they were locked in heated argument with the others. At any moment they might reach a decision and come to get him. It was an effort to saw through the binding at his ankles. His head was reeling. Your father put you in the den of a she-wolf. He was the wolf, my gay. He was murdered. The flake of flint was slippery with sweat. He dropped it, fumbled for it again. At last the binding was cut. He flexed his ankles and nearly cried out in pain. His legs burned from being cramped for so long. Worse than that was the pain in his heart. Fa had been murdered, murdered by the crippled wanderer who had created the demon bear with the sole aim of hunting him down. It wasn't possible. There had to be some mistake. And yet deep down, Torak knew it was true. He remembered the grimness on Fa's face as he lay dying. It will come for me soon, he had said. He had known what his enemy had done. He had known why the bear had been created. It was too much to take in. Torak felt as if everything he'd ever known had been swept away, as if he stood on day-old ice, watching the cracks spreading like lightning beneath his feet. The pain in his legs wrenched him back to the present. He tried to rub some feeling into them. His bare feet were cold, but there was nothing he could do. He hadn't been able to see where Oslak had taken his boots. Somehow, without being spotted, he had to get out of the shelter, across to the hazel bushes at the edge of the clearing. Somehow he had to evade the guard. He couldn't do it. He'd be seen. If only he could find some way to distract them. At the far end of the camp, a lonely yowl rose into the misty morning air. Where are you? cried Wolf. Why did you leave me to this time? Torak froze. His heart. He heard the camp dogs taking up the howl. He saw people leaping up from the clan meet and running to investigate. He knew that Wolf had given him his chance. He had to act fast. Quickly he edged out of the shelter and dived into the shadows behind the hazel bushes. He knew what he had to do, and he hated it. He had to leave Wolf behind.